Hello everybody, my name is Cool Blue, and I'm bringing you guys this video series. Um, it's going to be a few different videos, I'm not sure about how many I'm going to do on this, but um, these are just basically some of the small games that I have that I think are relatively good, that don't get talked about as much as I think they should. So of all these games that we have out here, um, there's a nice range of games. Uh, I went on ahead and went through and looked up some stats on every game, and I'm, like I said, I'm not sure what format I'm going to do this in, but I'm definitely going to do at least three videos. Um, so I can do a family of the Tiny Epic series and then the family of the Honor M series. Um, but as far as everything else is concerned, uh, this is a rel this is going to be a relatively straightforward series. These are all relatively small games. And for anybody who wants to know what my metric was for what I consider a small game, um, here's Seven Wonders Duel and here's Patchwork. Uh, these are games that I consider on the larger side of the small games. So any pretty much any game smaller than this, I would have considered a small game. So these two boxes, these are relatively small boxes. Especially when you talk about compared to things like Battle Con or Zombie Side, um, but these are what I would like to categorize as medium-sized boxes. So pretty much all these games are smaller than this box, with the close exception of Virgo Bros, which is a little bit thicker than um, I would like to like for it to be. But um, outside of that, all these games actually no, Stellar Conflict is actually close to that. Huh? Stellar Conflict barely com or barely qualifies as well. But anyway, all that aside, all the speculation aside, or all details aside. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and very briefly go over all these games, give you the, give you guys some stats on them, and then, uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and see how this goes. All right, so the format of this first video is going to be a little bit, a little bit all over the place. Um, I decided that I'm just going to go ahead and just go over all the games and just give you guys a brief, um, my brief, quick very brief review of each one. Um, I've played every single one of these games with the exception of Impulse. I have not played a full game of this yet and I think everything else I've played um, to full to full playthrough. So we'll go ahead and give a quick um, brief overview. Um, we'll start with these games in the corner. Um, this game and this game, these two games are essentially the same game. Uh, these are just different versions of the same games or reskins. Uh, one's a slight bit more advanced version. Um, but as far as they're concerned, these are the builders. Uh, the builders games are basically a worker placement, or sorry, a uh, card drafting, card drafting slash hand management type game. And you're trying to build your machine and get yourself some points. Uh, both games, I think, I think of all these two games, I prefer this one a little bit more. This one's the less advanced version. This one has a little bit more going on about it. Um, but both games are relatively good. Uh, go ahead and go check them out. And the next one on the list is going to be Continental Express. Continental Express, I like to describe it as a ticket to ride, um, a light ticket to ride like game. It basically has the same look and feel of ticket to ride, so it feels a lot like ticket to ride when I'm playing it. Uh, you do the same drafting cards and you build your trains and you get points. And uh, instead of routes, you're building different trains. So go check that one if you want. Next on the order of things is Neanderthal. Neanderthal is a worker placement slash civilization building game. Um, it's a very small game. This is probably one of the, this is the heaviest game out of all these, even heavier than Impulse. Which, if you guys have played Impulse, Impulse is a lot of reading and it's pretty heavy. Um, but according to Board Game Geek, at least, now this is the heaviest of all the games on this list. It's at a three point three point three eight out of five, I think. Uh, but Neanderthal's worker placement game, um, very fun. You can play solo. I like this one a lot. This is probably of all these games, my second, either my second or it's basically tied for my first favorite. So that's Neanderthal. Um, Friday. Friday is a solo game, very quick, very, very, very quick, very dastardly game. It's a solo deck building game. Uh, essentially, you're trying to fight through the island and make it through, and you build your deck up, and you you you'll lose a lot in this game. I've yet to win a game. I've come very close once, but I've I've lost basically every game I played of this out of like the 40 or 50 games I've played. Uh, but it plays really fast, which is nice. So you have very low, uh, very low drawback. Whenever you do fail, you can just quickly just set the deck back up and just start again and just keep going. So Friday solo game, about 15 minutes play time. Um, these two games I'm going to talk about at the same time, mainly because I feel they are basically the same game. Uh, except for Tiny Epic Western is a more advanced version of Harbor. That's how I like to describe it. And if you guys don't know what Harbor is, Harbor is a nice, fun game. Uh, you basically, it's a worker placement game. Uh, you're trying to build uh, a set of things or a tableau. You're trying to build your tableau of, of buildings and you're trying to get points based on that. Um, Tiny Epic King, or Tiny Epic Westerns is, like I said, a heavier version of Harbor, which Harbor is not that heavy to begin with. but. I, I tend to like this one a lot better than this one, but I wanted to talk about both these games because uh, I played this one first, and actually, now look at it, both were made by the same person, so that makes a lot of sense. 
Um, I did not realize that both of these are made by the, the designed by the same person until just now. Uh, but essentially, Tiny Epic Western, uh, you have worker placement, you have the set collection that you do in Harbor, you also have a stock market type deal, and you also have a poker hand, and you also have player interaction with like shooting people and doing like a duel, and you have sp variable character powers. So it's these games are very, very, very similar. If I had to recommend either one of these, I would highly recommend this one over this one, mainly because this is like an advanced version of this. But if you want something a slight bit lighter, and by slight bit, I mean this one's 45 minutes, this one's 60 minutes, I would argue this one's actually 60 minutes, and this one's actually 45 minutes. Um, but I would definitely recommend this one over this one. But yes, Tiny Epic Western, next game I was going to talk about, just basically talked about it. It's in the Tiny Epic line. I'm a huge fan of it by default because it's a small game by default. Tiny Epic Galaxies is a, uh, it's a 4X game, it's a 4X-ish type game, and for those who don't know what that means, uh, expand, exterminate, explore, and exploit, uh, that's uh, a, usually a, a concept thrown out for games like Civilization, where you're trying to expand your fleet or expand your colony and build stuff. Uh, for this one, you have that idea, except if you don't really have uh, the exterminate ability, there's some player interaction where you can, you know, mess up some players, but you can't really exterminate them completely. So exterminate is not really a good term for uh, what's involved in this one. Uh, this is a lot of dice rolling, uh, a lot of reading in this one too. I'm not sure how much of a fan I am of the reading part, but dice rolling, build your colony up. It feels like you're expanding the galaxy. It feels pretty epic. I would recommend this one too. Pretty good. Tiny Epic Kingdoms. Uh, this one is a true 4X game. Uh, much more 4X than Tiny Epic Galaxies. This is actually a 4X game. You can actually eliminate somebody completely from this game, which has happened to me before. Unfortunately, um, this is a um, this is a civilization type deal. Basically, you have your crew, you have your group, you run around the uh, maps, and then you get your resources. You expand your colony, you explore different places, and then you exploit the uh, resources, and then you build your civilization up to be the best. And you can exterminate people if you want. So this one, I like this one a lot because it has a lot of options uh, as far as what you can do to actually win. And Tiny Epic Defenders, uh, arguably one of the worst in the Tiny Epic series, I would agree wholeheartedly. Um, this game I like to call a pandemic version of Tiny Epic, um, and I'm not a huge fan, I'm not the biggest fan of pandemic to begin with, so there's some bias there automatically for me. But this one definitely is one of the weaker in the Tiny Epic lines. Uh, Tiny Epic Defenders, the way the game works is that basically you are defenders and you're defending six different realms from attacking dragons. And uh, this is continuously swarms upon swarm upon swarm of enemies just attacking you have to defend. Um, I think a lot of people, the reason why people ex uh, call this the weakest one in the series is because the way the co-op is interacted with, it's not really co-op. Like, like there's there's not that much choice. Like, you're kind of... Uh, I'll, I'll explain more when I review the game, but just know that you don't really control when you get to go first or who gets to go first or second or third or fourth. So that's why this one gets weak or knocked down a few points because you don't have as much control. Whereas something like Pandemic, you can say, okay, my turn is absolutely going to happen next. And then the thing happens. And then my uh, my, opponent, my um, partner's turn is going to happen next. And then something bad happens. This one kind of like something bad happens, something bad happens, something bad happens. Then the other person goes and yeah, it's Yeah, it's frustrating to say the least. A little bit more random than people expect. Um, these games in the Oniram series, I'll go ahead and go over those. The next one is Castilian. Actually, let's go with these in order. Um, I think Oniram definitely, no. Yeah, Oniram came first. So Oniram, Oniram is a game that a lot of people rave about. A really, really, really good solo game. Um, I actually don't like this one the best out of the series. I have a different favorite, but this one's definitely a solid game. Uh, essentially, you are trying to find certain doors. You're trying to find uh, things in a certain order and you have a certain way to do it. And of course, as the game goes along, bad cards show up, just mess you all up. So it's a really nice puzzly type game. Um, a lot of people like this as their, I uh, put this as their best solo game. Like I said, I have a different opinion. Uh, the next one, I think in the series was Erbian. Erbian came out next, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Erbian is extremely hard to find, so disclaimer, I had this one from a while ago because it's one of the first few games that I bought. And I bought it instead of Unrim because it was slightly cheaper. Um, so I kind of lucked out, but this game is out of print as far as I understand it. Hopefully they're making a second edition. Uh, Urbian is a little bit more difficult to describe. Uh, it is a uh, it's a solo game, so one to two players. You can technically play two, but I wouldn't recommend that two. Definitely one would be preferred. Uh, it's a solo game where you're trying to do math. Like it's a math heavy game. Like I, I don't know how else to explain. I sort of math the game um, that like smacks you over the face every once in a while, or actually a lot. Um, out of all the games I've played this, like out of let's say 50 games I've played this, I've won two. 
And those two that I have won, I literally had three cards off in the deck out of a 70 or 80 card deck. So this game is pretty darn difficult. Um, there is a lot of random chance because of those times that I did win, the cards that would have messed me all kinds of up uh, were either the card at that was next or the card that was down at the bottom. So it literally comes down to a card draw where this game comes in, which is frustrating for some people. But I think this one's my um, top favorite because this is the first one I played. And also, it's pretty good. I like it. I like the challenge. The next one in the line of games, I think, was Castilion. So I think Castilion came out next after Erbian. And, uh, no, actually, yeah. I'll, I'll do a check later, and when I actually do a review of the Honor Rim series, I'll put them all together. Uh, but Castilion is a tile laying game, a tile placement game. Uh, this one, I think, is probably the best out of the Owner Room series. Uh, side note, all the Owner Room series games, they are solo games technically, but you can play two players. So it's a two player version of all the Owner Room games, uh, Owniverse games. Uh, but this one's probably the best two player because of the way the tile placement works. But essentially, you're drawing tiles from a bag, you're placing tiles in a certain order, and then there are tiles that show up that advance the game's time, and you kind of want to have a certain pattern before the time runs out. If you don't have a certain pattern before the time runs out, then the game's over. Uh, with the two-player variant, two people are building their um, their own their own uh, tableau or tile area, their six by six grid, and uh, you can cooperate back and forth. And I actually like this one a lot better because it feels like a two-player game. Like this one, I probably like best as two-player game. Solo game feels harder, but I don't know. And the next one that came out, if I'm not mistaken, is Sylveon. So Sylveon is a deck builder game, or card drafting game I guess, it's not a deck builder. It's a solo uh, card drafting game, uh, it has a two player variant, don't play it, please don't, it's, it's, not, it's not even worth it. Um, but the solo version, definitely the best, um, best experience overall. It is a tower defense, so it's a solo card drafting in the beginning, then a tower defense game. So it can be frustrating because you can just happen to not draw the right cards. But of course if you play your cards right and you place things in the right spot, you'll win, obviously. Uh, but this one's probably the best challenge solo, so if you were to choose only one of these for solo, I would highly recommend this one over all the other ones. Uh, but beware, the footprint for this game is pretty huge. I'm going to think of all the games on this table, of all the small games I have on this table, uh, this game might be the largest game, with the exception of maybe Tiny Epic Western and maybe Impulse. Actually, no, no, Burger Bros is by far the largest. Um, but yes, Sylveon is like second or third as far as the biggest footprint, the amount of space it takes, so be careful about that. And Nautilion is the newest one in the Owner Rim series. For some reason, this game is really hard to find. <laughs> I happened to get it the day it came out because I, I had to drive like 40 minutes away to get it. But um, this game is a roll to move. I am on the fence about that a lot because it's a fun roll to move. I don't like roll to moves in general. They remind me too much of Monopoly or Life, which I hate um, because they're just so, ugh, so many bad memories. Uh, but not a tillion is a roll to move. Uh, you roll three dice, you assign one to yourself, you assign one to the evil guy, and you assign one to the um, evil faction. So there's like two pawns moving, yours, which is the good pawn, and theirs, which is the bad pawn. And there's like a, a, a another thing you can assign it to, where if you assign certain numbers, then bad things will happen. So pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Of all the games, I think this is probably the weakest game in the Owner Room series. Um, and if I were to rank all these games in order, um, I would say this is definitely the weakest. Owner Room for me is probably the second weakest. And many people, that's going to be a controversial opinion, but I'll talk about more about why when I actually review all the uh, all the Owniverse games. So, we're almost done. We got a few left. Next game that we'll go ahead and talk about will be Burgle Bros. And this is a game that I've been bringing to the table a lot as of recent. I played two times in real life, and I played two times on Tabletop Simulator, um, which is definitely awesome to play. Um, but this game is a really, really fun game. Probably my favorite game among all these games here so far. Um, the only reason I say that is because it feels like you're doing adventure things. So this is a cooperative game where your goal is to go and do a heist. Like think Ocean's Eleven, the board game. Um, this game does have multiple floors, so you have three different floors that you can play, like three floors or two floors, depending on which version you play. And you have your characters, everybody will have their own character that they move, and then the guards on the floor will move, and if you get caught by the guard too many times then the whole team loses. Um, I like it a lot. It's a very puzzly cooperative game, and uh, like I said, I don't like games like Pandemic or games like, uh, I, I barely like Forbidden Island now because I've played other games, but um, this game kind of has like a Pandemic-esque feel where you're, like, you're trying to sneak around cooperatively where like there's this thing punching you in the face every single time you do something wrong. 
Um, so that aspect of things, like not the disease spreading part, but the co-op that's in it is nice because it's very difficult for you to, as a person to have somebody to quarterback. Like I've tried of the five times I played total, or sorry, four times I played total, I tried to quarterback in one game and it failed pretty hard. So because the guards are so random, you just can't control it. it you can't predict it. So this is definitely a good game. Highly recommend it. Um, this one's a little bit hard to find now because it's, it's you have to order either from the publisher or buy $70 from Amazon. The game MSRP is like $35. Definitely just order from uh, the publisher. Tim Flowers did a good job on this game. Order directly from him. Definitely worth it. Uh, Impulse is the game on the table that I said that I have not played all the way through. Um, still not sure how to feel about this game. Uh, the components are pretty ugly. I was going to preference everything by saying that. So my opinions are going to be slightly biased here, um, but as far as the game goes, this is uh, I like to call it I like to call it a not as pretty version of Zaya Legend, Legends of a Drift System. Uh, the only reason why I say it is because it has the same idea, it has the same uh, rough feel of it, where it feels like you're exploring the space, it feels like you're going on missions to do things, but it's not really quite like that because it's not one not as pretty, two not as expansive. Your decisions are really to just like either attack a person, move a ship. Or um, you know mine or stuff and there's like there's like a ton of different things you can do in this game a lot of different ways to win in this game which is awesome but then again components uh, I can't I can't say enough the components are really bad if they had a prettier version of this game I might be able to bring it to the table more but this game is um I'm, I'm still on the fence about this I haven't played all the way through yet so we'll see we'll see so Iota, Iota is the next game that we'll talk about. Iota is a tiny little game that uh, is basically Quirkle or Scrabble. If you guys have ever played Quirkle, it's more like Quirkle than Scrabble. Actually, it's probably more like Scrabble than Quirkle. But uh, complexity-wise, uh, I would rate Iota closer to Scrabble than Quirkle is. And if you guys don't know what Quirkle is, just go look it up. Quirkle is an awesome game too. But I put this game on the table instead because it's slightly smaller um, than the little bag, small travel version that I have. Iota is a little small game, like I said, it's basically Scrabble, so if you like games where you're placing tiles in a certain area and you're trying to score points based on the efficiency of your tiles and you, you feel awesome and stuff because you got the right tiles at the right time, this is definitely your game. Um, it is a tile placement game, it is a Scrabble-like game, minus all the spelling, which I like a lot, that means I can play with my mom, because my mom destroys me in Scrabble because I can't spell for crap. Um, but this game is definitely fun. Um, I, like I said, me personally, I prefer Quirkle because it's a little bit simpler scoring rules, but this one's definitely a fun game, so recommend it to you. And The Great Heartland Hauling Co. So I am extremely biased towards uh, Dice Hate Me. Um, their games have, generally speaking, been good, in my opinion, and I tend to like their games a lot. So this one is definitely no exception. The Great Heartland is a pick-up-and-deliver type game where you are playing a truck and you travel from one spot, you pick up stuff from one spot, and you drop it off on another spot. Plain and simple. Um, definitely, definitely a fun game. Definitely an awesome game. I highly recommend it because it's not too terribly expensive. Uh, the footprint in this game is a little bit bigger than it seems, but definitely, definitely a nice, nice uh, adventure that you can have because you're exploring, you're moving around, this, uh, moving around the map, and you're just getting money. It's all the fun can be had in this game. The next game we'll talk about is Rock Paper Wizard. Rock, Paper, Wizard is probably um, uh, of the games on this table. I think this is the second second game that can play the most people. Because technically Impulse can play six, and Citadels can play eight. So I think this one's tied for second for playing the most people at this table right now. Um, anyway, Rock, Paper, Wizard is a simultaneous action selection game. And it's also a lot of take that inside this game. So basically, you're going to be having cards out. You're going to throw a spell out that does a certain thing based on the cards that are out there and uh, you all throw them at the same time, the results will happen, you'll be in a certain place on a certain track, and depending on your position on that track, uh, you'll get a certain number of points. Uh, Rock Paper Wizard is a very nice game. I like to call it a lighter version of Cash and Guns, even though it's not really a lighter version of Cash and Guns, because I feel like, no, nah, no, nah, I take it back. Yeah, it's definitely a lighter version of Cash and Guns. Uh, the game's about 25 minutes, 25 to 30 minutes in playthrough. Cash and Guns probably about 40 uh, without rules. So definitely a good game, I would recommend this one too. The next one we'll talk about will be Stellar Conflict. Stellar Conflict is a, hmm, it's a war-esque game. Um, I, I, don't, I don't really know how to describe it all that well. Yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm drawing a blank, but basically you'll have a faction of ships. So every, every faction is different. There's four different factions you can have. 
and you will throw those cards out like both both people or all people playing will spend a minute or two minutes depending on how many people are playing um, throwing their cards on the table so you spend two minutes throwing cards on the table strategically allegedly but I mean it really just comes down to just throwing cards on the table and uh, then you spend 10 minutes you know figuring out who did what so each card has a priority so each ship has a priority and your goal is to have a certain number of points at the end of the game by either destroying ships or either collecting uh, the little resources that are in the game and whoever has the most points at the end of scoring wins so definitely um, one of those games that you spend two minutes doing a thing and then you spend 10 minutes adding the score um, and that's basically the end of the game um, I like it a lot because it feels it feels like a little light war game and I, I'm not really good at war games and it's really fun to have a small one that can just carry with me just in case I can find somebody who can play it with me so definitely cool stellar conflict and the next one is Sell to India. And Sell to India has been hitting my table a lot as of recent. Um, based specifically Tabletop Simulator. So I specifically went on Tabletop Sim so I can play this before I actually did this video. Um, this game is a game that I've had for a long time. It is a uh, worker placement style game slash cube management type deal. It, it's, it's a little, it, it fits in like a, a lot of different categories, but the main thing is you're trying to collect a set of resources and you're trying to score points and whoever has the most victory points at the end of the game wins. Um, there's a little bit of adventure to this game, which I like because you're moving your cubes along a little track that represents you sailing towards India, which is awesome. And uh, each different uh, card has a specific resource associated with it. So Sail to India, definitely a fun game. Um, I think as of recent, I've played, I'm up to four playthroughs on this game and I've won two out of four. And uh, the scores usually in those games are, I think the highest score I've seen so far was 12, and it wasn't me. I had 11. I lost by one point. Sad. But for the most part, though, Sail to India is definitely a good game. Um, a, lot of, a lot of cool ways to try to win. And last but not least, of course, we have Citadels. Now, preference, I'm prefacing everything by saying that this is, I think this version is officially out of print. I don't know. Um, but this game is on the list because of the small box size, as you guys can see. And relative to all the other stuff, um, the newer version is a bigger box, but relative to all the other stuff, uh, this one is probably going to be the one that plays the most. I would not recommend this to 8 players, because it can play 8 players max, but it is essentially a secret role selection, slash um, variable player power, slash variable turn thing. It's, Board Game Geek had a whole lot of listing for this one, but essentially, you'll be playing cards at a certain time, that, or sorry, selecting a role, and then you'll activate the role, and based on what everybody else did, or based on the interaction, you'll either get some nice benefit or you'll have mistimed things and you'll lose stuff. Like an assassin can kill you or a robber can take all your money. So bad things can happen in this game, but it's a lot of player interaction. I don't know if I would call this a 45 minute game. I think Board Game Geek listed this either as a 60 or 45 minute game. I think this is about a 90 minute game, no matter how you cut it. I don't know why all my games always end up lasting long, but I played about seven or eight games of this and all of them have been about 90 minutes. Definitely a fun game though. Um, nice game to have just everybody sit around the table and play it. Very simple, very straightforward type interactions, but a lot of complex strategy, so a lot of replayability in this game. All right, and that's basically it. So we made it through the listing, so good job, good job. If you watched the whole entire video, awesome stuff. Um, I will be making at least two video series, at least two, or sorry, at least two more videos uh, in this series. Um, one video for the Tiny Epic series, and one video for the Owner Room series. So I will be making at least two more videos. I might make more. Um, I ultimately want to try to do reviews on all these games, but some of these games already have reviews, and others like Rock Paper Wizard are um, lacking in lacking in reviews already uh, that are out there on the internet. So definitely, definitely ex uh, look forward to seeing a few more reviews on these two series of games. And oh wait, what's the one? And uh, yeah, that's basically it. So thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And as always, I will see you guys whenever.